So quick question, y'all. I know the James Webb telescope, right? It's out here doing extraordinary things, extraordinary, beyond extraordinary things, right? It's finding galaxies, all kinds of things, right? Sending back like beautiful, like never be seen, never before seen footage, photos. Question for y'all. You ever been out, out, maybe just leisurely out and about, right? And ever felt like somebody was just watching you? Look over your shoulder every now and again. You're like, dang, you feel like somebody watching you, watching me, watching you. You ask the person next to you, you ever, you ever had that, that feeling, that gut feeling like somebody's watching you? What if the entire time we're out here, you know, exploring, researching, finding different things in space, what if the very thing that we could be possible, one of the things that we're possibly looking for, which is life, is watching us look for them. Like watching us do all of this stuff, just looking right back at us. What if, what if that's the case right now? That, that just, that's just one of the, the thoughts. Like I'm deep in this stuff right now, bro. It's scary how deep I am. What if they're just watching us watch, look for them? You know what I'm saying? And they're just as elusive. I, I don't know. But that was just one of my thoughts that I had to. And I noticed I said one of my thoughts that I had to bring y'all in on that I was thinking about. But anyway, listen. So next video, right? James Webb Telescope found galaxies never seen before. All right. So we're going to check this video out. Shout out to Destiny, man. Make sure you go show them a lot of love. Subscribe if you haven't to them already. All right. And if you haven't subscribed here, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button and join the family. And let's check this video out. All right, here we go. In one of its first images, the James Webb Space Telescope captured a galaxy named Glass Z13, which set the record of becoming the oldest galaxy ever observed. He said Glass Z13, but it said 31 on there. Am I tripping? In one of its first images, the James Webb Space Telescope captured a galaxy named Glass Z13, which but it says Z31, that's, that's, maybe it's a typo, but that's just confusing me, sorry. Set the record of becoming the oldest galaxy ever observed by astronomers, forming just a mere 300 million years after the Big Bang. The telescope has been fully operational since July the 11th, and it's already stunned scientists by its sharp images and fascinating discoveries. Get ready to learn how the James Webb Space Telescope has already detected an exoplanet with one of the main conditions for life, made an image covering an area of the sky one-fifth of the moon's diameter, and showed us Jupiter's rings like never seen before. The James Webb Space Telescope has many advantages over the Hubble Telescope. Webb operates at a distance roughly 1.5 million kilometers from our planet, which is four times farther than the moon. At this distance, there's no interference from space stations and satellites that affect the Hubble telescope's images that operates 547 kilometers from Earth. In addition, the Hubble telescope mainly observes in the visible and ultraviolet light bands. The JWST is equipped with the NIRCAM for near infrared and MIRI for mid infrared spectrum. Astrophysicist John C. Mather believes the telescope is so powerful it could detect a bumblebee hovering in space at the Earth-Moon distance. <laughs> Infrared vision allows the telescope to look at the edge. That's pretty good right there. <laughs> I didn't think it was that good, but when you put it in that type of perspective, okay, bring it on then. We're gonna find something with this telescope. At the Earth-Moon distance. Infrared vision allows the telescope to look at the edge of the universe, where the oldest galaxies and stars are hiding. The Hubble Space Telescope is unable to penetrate the powerful veil of gas and dust that surrounds many planets, stars and galaxies, but JWST penetrates everything like an X-ray. One of the biggest differences is the JWST's mirror, which is 6.5 meters in diameter. It can take in a lot more light and is the largest mirror ever sent into space. It's almost three times as large as Hubble's 2.4 meter mirror. Thanks to such unique equipment, the first images made by JWST were surprisingly clear. 
even faintly luminous objects were visible. In this image, you can see the deepest and clearest view of the early universe to date. JWST captured it in just one day, while the Hubble telescope took several weeks to collect similar deep field images. The deep field image from the JWST shows thousands of galaxies. In the middle, you can see a group of galaxies that are part of a galaxy cluster named SMACS 0723. Their combined mass acts as a gravitational lens, refracting light rays from more distant galaxies behind it, so they appear warped. Many galaxies are so tiny and dim that no telescope has ever detected them before. The starting point for the JWST was our solar system. This is Jupiter as it was captured by the telescope. Scientists decided to get an image. That dot right there over there in the corner. Every time I think of Jupiter from now on, I'm going to think about that storm. That storm there, it's mentioned Jupiter automatically. My eyes already start trying to find it. This is Jupiter as it was captured by the telescope. Scientists decided to get an image of the gas giant while the telescope was still being tested. Since then, the planet has been involved in many photo shoots. This was a way for researchers to assess the real capabilities of JWST, and it exceeded all expectations. The James Webb Telescope was able to clearly see the planet's famous stripes, resulting from complex atmospheric phenomena. It also captured the Great Red Spot, a mysterious giant storm, 16,000 kilometers, 10,000 miles wide, and powerful enough to swallow the entire Earth. Jupiter, multiple Earths. <laughs> The satellite Europa can be seen on the left, and there are also images of the other moons, Thebe and Metis. JWST also captured some of the planet's rings. That's right, Jupiter has rings. Detecting and capturing the gas giant's faint rings is incredibly difficult, as they're hardly distinguishable near bright objects in space, including Jupiter itself. Following this, the telescope shifted its gaze towards the very distant WASP-96b exoplanet and immediately delivered stunning results. Astronomers discovered the planet back... Hey, I thought he was about to say that was Mars. Anybody else was thinking that? <laughs> like, that's... That, uh, to me, resembles with the image I have of Mars. The telescope shifted its gaze towards the very distant WASP-96b exoplanet and immediately delivered stunning results. Astronomers discovered the planet back in 2013 in the constellation Phoenix. They found out that it's a gas giant, located roughly 1,150 light years away from us. It has a mass less than half Jupiter's, but a diameter 1.2 times that of Jupiter. Because of this, the exoplanet is as puffy as cotton candy. It rotates much closer to its yellow dwarf than Mercury. That's what I was about to ask. I was like, it looks like it would have extreme temperatures on that planet just based upon its appearance, the color, and Mercury everything. does to the sun. Cotton candy. It rotates much closer to its yellow dwarf than Mercury does to the sun. This heats up the planet to more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. JWST recorded the presence of clouds and haze in the atmosphere of the planet. It also detected traces of water, indicated by the presence of certain gas molecules in the planet's atmosphere. Scientists were thrilled. Hubble has been searching for water for the past two decades and was only able to detect signs of it in 2013, and JWST made a valuable discovery almost instantly. This is intriguing, but not as exciting as it would be to find alien forms of life on WASP-96b. But astronomers say the detection of biologically significant substances like water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and methane is the first step on this path. If the telescope finds such substances on rocky planets as well, it would be a clear indication that we should start looking for signs of living creatures there. In another JWST image, you can see the Southern Ring Nebula, located two and a half thousand light years from Earth. An expanding cloud of gas surrounds a dying star, and this cloud isn't caused by the star at the center, but the star seen below. Over thousands of years, it's ejected at least eight layers of gas and dust. The bright central star mixes these emissions, creating complex rings of planetary nebulae and piercing them with its radiance. This is also how sunlight on Earth fills in the gaps in the clouds. Hubble had also previously delivered great images of the Southern Ring and many other nebulae. It showed us that these are not just clumps of gas, 
but colourful and extremely complex systems. But JWST did an even better job. Not only did it capture a clear image of the planetary nebula, but also a huge stretch of space behind it filled with many galaxies. The bright, thin sliver of light on the left is one of them. Here you can see how detailed the JWST image is compared to the Hubble image. Yeah, that's... Like, for me, I'm looking at that and in my mind I'm thinking like, okay, what's happening here? What is it doing? What is it trying to do? What is it possibly forming? What could, co could come out of that? Like, what... Looking at this, man, I would have to do a case study on this for a year, for a year to try to figure out, you know what I mean? And gather data of what could be happening here. You know what I mean? Because something, I don't know, something just tells me it's not just gas is just spewing out. You know what I mean? That's happening, but what's the result of that happening? Could it be forming? You know what I mean? So... I have so many questions staring at this, bro. I, you know what I mean? I could do a whole course on, on looking up and gathering information of what this could possibly lead to. Here, you can see how detailed the JWST image is compared to the Hubble image. Another difference. And then that light in the center of it, like in the dead center of it, like, yeah, yeah, that would bother me because I need to know what does that mean or what does that signify? Like, yeah, yeah, I need to know. Difference is the... Like it could indicate the forming of something new. Tell the JWST image is compared to the Hubble image. Another difference is the bright stars in Hubble's image have four beams, while the stars in the JWST's image show six points of light. This is because the Hubble telescope has a round lens with a secondary mirror hanging in front of it on four extensions. The JWST lens, on the other hand, has 18 hexagonal mirror segments. Now take a look at this stunning image. What is this monstrous purple maelstrom? This is how JWST saw the spiral galaxy NGC 628 or M74, located in the constellation Pisces, roughly 32 million light years away from Earth. But why does it differ so much from this Hubble image of the same galaxy? This is because JWST had a different task. It had made a detailed examination of the threads of dust and gas that block the light of most stars, although some stars still peek through the veil. You can also see the aftermath of supernova explosions and areas of new star formations that make the image more dynamic. But let's look at another fantastic image. This is the largest image made by JWST, which covers about one-fifth of the diameter of the Moon. It shows a compact group of galaxies called Stefan's Quintet in the constellation Pegasus, about 290 million light years away from us. Four of the five galaxies in this quintet seem to be performing a gravitational dance, approaching each other and sometimes colliding. And, and that's the question I was about to say, what happens when they collide? What could, be, what could form out of them colliding? They fuse together, become one, you know what I mean? Or does it something happen and an explosion? What happens when they, that collide? And is the James Webb prepared if it's around something like that when it happens? What you know what I mean? Is there a, a protocol to get it evacuated out of its vicinity when something like this happens? But more so, like what happens if they collide? Light years away from us. Four of the five galaxies in this quintet seem to be performing a gravitational dance, approaching each other and sometimes colliding. And the fifth one is quietly watching this performance at a distance of 40 million light years away from Earth. It's a bright and exciting spectacle. True, the Hubble telescope has given us the opportunity to admire it more than once before, but JWST saw Stefan's quintet in a new light. This huge mosaic was created by astronomers consisting of nearly 1,000 separate JWST images, totaling more than 150 million pixels. The image shows never-before-seen detail in Stefan's Quintet. We can observe many bright dots, distant background galaxies, sparkling clusters of millions of young stars, entire regions of star formations, wide tails of gas, dust and stars ejected from several galaxies due to gravitational interactions and even huge shock waves as the galaxy NGC 7318b pierces the cluster. The uppermost Ooh. galaxy NGC 7... 
It is. Go back. See if I can move this out of the way. Dang it. It won't let me move. But if you could see right here, if y'all look, it does look like this one is colliding if these gases are already penetrating through. That's what it looks like right here to me. Right here, it looks like these two haven't collided yet. But these two here look like they're already starting to intertwine. So I'm interested to see if there's any, you know what I mean? Something, will something happen from that? Rotational interactions and even huge shock waves as the galaxy NGC 7318B pierces the cluster. The uppermost galaxy, NGC 7319, contains a galactic core with an active, supermassive black hole at its center. And JWST was able to penetrate through the dense layer of gas and dust into the galaxy's core. The telescope detected hot gas near the black hole and transmitted it with a striking level of detail. Even more new details were revealed by the James Webb Space Telescope in this astonishing Cosmic Cliffs image. This is the edge of a young, star-forming region called NGC 3324 in the Carina Nebula. The wall of the nebula is sculpted by intense ultraviolet light and stellar winds of extremely massive hot young stars. Scientists were amazed. Once again, compared to Hubble, JWST produced a much sharper image, which is especially noticeable when the images from both telescopes are superimposed. In the James Webb Space Telescope's image, you can see burning dots in the background. They're not stars, but very distant galaxies. The bluish haze that seems to rise from the celestial mountains is actually hot ionized gas and dust ejected from the nebula by the continuous radiation of young stars. So now that you've seen these incredible images, which one is your favorite? Give us a like and sound off in the comments. The James Webb Space Telescope has just begun its cosmic mission, so make sure you stay tuned here by subscribing so you don't miss out on anything. Thanks for watching. I think the, the best image was one of the most recent ones at towards the end of the clip where it showed the James Webb like beaming towards this black hole. I think that was super dope because for several reasons for me, like a black hole as we know it or the information we've gathered has a very strong, strong, the strongest gravitational pull, right? Nothing gets out of it. So for me, NASA scientists had to calculate how close the James Webb could get to that black hole without being sucked in. You know what I mean? You know? And then if I'm a scientist, I'm like, you think we could build something to go in there and then send us, transmit us back data of what's inside the black hole? You know what I mean? I'd be trying to figure out that. But even put that to the side, the fact that they were able to calculate how close they could get to it and then beam and transmit and see and gather data from what they can from the black hole. I think that was super, super cool. I think that was super dope, bro. You know what I mean? So that was the that was the coolest part of this entire video to me, man. Like I said, the James Webb, bro, it's it's, it's just doing unbelievable and phenomenal things, man. You know, every opportunity I get. I try to catch an update if my phone doesn't send me one. I try to get an update to see, you know, where it's at. I think today when I read something, it said it was in a cooling stage. It's in a cooling stage. So it must have went through something where, you know, it had to go through a hot temperature area. And now it's in its cooling stage, possibly. I don't know. I'm going to have to deep dive into some more information to see. But yeah, man, I try to gather, get as much information as I can, you know, when I have the opportunity to do so. So super, super fascinating, man. I hope you guys found that as well. Shout out to Destiny again for the video. Y'all get at me. James Webb telescope found galaxies never seen before. Y'all get at me in the comment section, man. And let me know what you think. And stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.